Hello viewers, I am Dr. Priyanki Sharma, an assistant professor, Department of Geology, Naugao College. Here in this presentation, I am going to discuss about immunology of HIV infection. This topic is very important for both easy and PG students of life sciences. Hope all the students will be benefited from this presentation. So these are the learning outcomes from this presentation. We will learn about what is HIV, about AIDS and HIV, history, how this HIV enters host cell, mechanism of this viral integration, how this HIV multiply in host cell, structure of HIV, HIV replication cycle, pathogenesis of HIV infection, latent stage of HIV, CD4 count and viral load. Let's start the topic, what is HIV? As we all know, HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus, which is a virus that can attack the cell of our immune system and can make a person more vulnerable to life-threatening opportunistic infections and diseases. That is, this HIV, this virus, can weaken our immune system and any pathogen can easily enter into our body and can cause infection. And it is a retrovirus having RNA as a genetic material. It is not a DNA virus, it is an RNA virus. It consists of an envelope, a capsid, and an RNA as genetic material. HIV, that is the human immunodeficiency virus, is of main two types, HIV-1 and HIV-2. Both this type can weaken our immune system, but most people living with HIV have HIV-1. HIV-2 tends to develop more slowly and is less easy for people to transmit than HIV-1. AIDS and HIV. HIV that is the human immune deficiency virus can cause acute immune deficiency syndrome. That is, this HIV, this virus can cause a secondary immune deficiency which is called acute immune deficiency syndrome. This is not congenital, it is acute, acute during lifetime. And this AIDS, this syndrome is an epidemic viral disease of human population. And this disease is caused by infection of RNA virus, that is the HIV, on lymphocytes. As a result of which, the T helper cells are depressed and this leads to suppression of the immune system. That is, this virus can attack the most important cells of the immune system, that is the T helper cells. As the immune system is depressed, the individual is susceptible to infection and series of diseases. Though the initial infection of virus paves way for the development of a complex disease, it is called syndrome. That is, as many symptoms appear, it is called syndrome. It is not having only one symptom or two symptoms, it is having multiple symptoms because the person with low numbers of T helper cell is having and low or weakened immune system. So due to this weakened immune system, the person becomes susceptible to any type of infection. So he will develop many symptoms. That is why this disease is called syndrome, acute immune deficiency syndrome. Now let's discuss about the history. This disease that is caused by HIV, Okay, the disease that HIV-1 causes was first reported in the United States in 1981 in Los Angeles, New York and San Francisco. A group of patients developed unusual infections, including the opportunistic fungal pathogen, okay, pneumocystis carini, which causes pneumonia called P. carini pneumonia, PCP, in a people with immunodeficiency. In addition to PCP, some patients had Kaposi sarcoma, an extremely rare skin tumor, as well as other rarely encountered opportunistic infections. More complete evaluation of the patient showed that they had in common, they all these patients are having a common problem that 
a marked deficiency in cellular immune responses. They have a significant decrease in subpopulation of T cells that carry CD4 markers. In 1983, Luc Montagnier team at the Pasteur Institute in Paris discovered HIV-1 using the established technique by collecting T cells from AIDS patients. Okay, now let's discuss how virus this HIV enters the host cell. The AIDS virus, that is the HIV, can infect human T helper cells, that those are lymphocytes, causing lysis of those host cells. The first step is the viral attachment to the target cell. First of all, the virus gets attached to the host cell. HIV can infect the T helper cells that carry the CD4 antigen or receptors. As we know that the T helper cells are having the receptor CD4. So the HIV can bind to the CD4 receptors present on the T helper cell. Some HIV can also infect the monocytes and other cells like dendritic cells which has CD4 molecule on the cell surface. This preference is due to high affinity interaction between the envelope protein of the virus and cell surface CD4 molecule. This interaction is helped or assisted by some other cell surface molecules. There are some other co-receptors which help in the binding between this virus and the T helper cells or monocytes or dendritic cells. Those co-receptors are some chemokine receptors like CXCR4 on T cell and analog receptor CCR5 uh, functions for monocytes and macrophages. HIV infects cell by virtue of its major envelope glycoprotein. That is in the HIV. In their envelope, they have some glycoprotein like GP120 and GP41. This envelope glycoproteins can bind to the CD4 receptor present in the T cell and chemokine receptors present in the T helper cells or in monocytes or in the macrophage. That is GP120 and GP41 can bind to CD4 and other chemokine receptors present in this cells to which they will bind. Now, mechanism of viral integration. How this virus HIV integrates into the host cell? HIV infection of the target cell. HIV as we come to know that it is having 120, GP120 and GP120 binds to the CD4 present on the target cell. The fusogenic domain in group that is GP41, glycoprotein 41 and CXCR4 that is the core receptor, a Z protein linked receptor on the target cell membrane mediate fusion of HIV membrane with the host cell membrane. Nucleocapsid containing the viral genome and enzyme enters into the host cell. Let's start the topic. What is HIV? As we all know, HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus, which is a virus that can attack the cell of our immune system and can make a person more vulnerable to life-threatening opportunistic infections and diseases. That is, this HIV, this virus, can weaken our immune system and any pathogen can easily enter into our body and can cause infection. And it is a retrovirus having RNA as a genetic material. It is not a DNA virus, it is an RNA virus. It consists of an envelope, a capsid, and an RNA as genetic material. HIV, that is the human immunodeficiency virus, is of name two types HIV. Original RNA is then partially degraded. That is, original viral RNA will be degraded by ribonuclease enzyme, and which is followed by the synthesis of the second DNA strand to yield double stranded DNA. Now, the viral single stranded DNA will become double stranded DNA. Now, this viral double stranded DNA, which we call provirus, translocated into the nucleus. Okay, it will, uh, from cytoplasm, it will enter into the nucleus and integrated into the host chromosomal DNA by integrase enzyme. Now, activation of provirus. Now, transcription factors will stimulate the transcription of proviral DNA. Now, inside the host nucleus, this proviral DNA will now transcribe into genomic single-stranded RNA. 
and after processing it will become mRNA. Now this viral RNA from the nucleus will go again go to the host cytoplasm. In the host cytoplasm it will enter into the uh, ribosome and will catalyze the synthesis of viral precursor protein. Now the viral protein will be synthesized. Viral protease cleaves precursor into viral protein. Now viral RNA that is the single stranded RNA and protein, viral protein, they, they assemble. They assemble to form the virion core structure. They will form the virion structure that is the viral core structure inside the host cell into which VP41 and VP120 are inserted. Now the viral structure will be formed inside the host cell. That is basically the thing. Okay, now let's discuss how virus, this HIV enters the host cell. The AIDS virus, that is the HIV, can infect human T helper cells, that those are lymphocytes, causing lysis of those host cells. The first step is the viral attachment to the target cell. First of all, the virus gets attached to the host cell. HIV can infect the T helper cells that carry the CD4 antigen or receptors. As we know that the T helper cells are having the receptor CD4. So the HIV, so here this is the structure of HIV that is the human immunodeficiency virus. So here we can see the envelope, lipid envelope we can see and these are VP41, these are the transcendent glycoprotein and GP120, these are the docking glycoprotein. We can see the blue one is the RNA genome, which is the main viral genome. And we can see the nucleocapsid, then we can see the capsid, which is the here brown color. It's indicated with the brown color, that is the capsid. Then we can see that protease, peptides and host proteins are there. Okay. Then MHC proteins we can see. So this is the structure here, the enzyme reverse transcriptase integrase enzymes are there inside the viral, viral uh, body. So this is the structure of HIV. So pathogenesis of HIV infection, as we know that initially the HIV infects the T cells and macrophages directly or is carried to the cells by Langerhans cell. Viral replication occurs in the regional lymph nodes uh, and why when they repl replicate, they will increase the load of virus that is the viridinia and widespread seeding of lymphoid tissue and through lymph it will be spread. The viridinia is controlled by the host immune response also. The patient then enters a phase of clinical latency. Sometimes uh, the patient remain asymptomatic that is called uh, that is called the clinical latency. Uh, it is the stage uh, which is having no signs or symptoms. During this stage there is a very slow reduction in the CD4 count as the cell or immune system is also working and associated gradual increase uh, in the amount of HIV particles in the body. This is the asymptomatic HIV infection due to uh, lack of noticeable symptoms. This is called clinical latency. During this phase, viral replication in both T cells and macrophages continues unabated. But during this stage, what will happen inside the T cells and the macrophages, the replication of the virus will be continued. Uh, but, uh, but there is some immune containment of the virus. So there will be gradual erosion of the CD4 plus cells by productive infection. Ultimately, the CD4 cell numbers will decline and the patient will de de develop some clinical symptoms and which is we know as the full-blown AIDS. Uh, macrophages are also parasitized by the virus early. They are not lysed by HIV and they transport the virus to tissues and particularly to brain. So, we already discussed about the latent stage of HIV. The provirus sometimes also remain latent. They will remain silent that I mentioned. Uh, silent until infected cell trigger its activation. Sometimes the provirus will remain within the host cell inside the host DNA. So, until and unless the infected cell trigger its activation uh, which may lead to the formation and release of viral particles. Only when the infected cell trigger its activation then only the formation and release of vir viral particles can happen. Clinical latency that we already discussed is the state of HIV uh, living or developing in a host without producing any clinical symptoms that is asymptomatic HIV infection. During this stage there is a very slow reduction in the number of CD4 T cells with time and associated gradual increase in the amount of HIV particles in the body. So finally one time will come when the CD4 count uh, will decrease 
so much that the person will become susceptible to different types of opportunistic diseases so then then the clinical latency will be over now what is cd4 count when the cd4 lymphocytes in blood that is the t helper cells number uh, decreases this number can uh, help to determine uh, certain things uh, this cd4 number can uh, help us to determine the following that is how well the immune system can protect the body from infection how severe the damage done by hiv most healthy people have cd4 count of 500 to 1000 cells per microliter of blood typically the number of cd4 plus lymphocyte is reduced during the first few months of the infection but after about 3 to 6 months the cd4 count stabilizes without but without treatment it usually continues to decline at rates that vary from slow to rapid let's start the topic what is hiv as we all know hiv the human immunodeficiency virus which is a virus that can attack the cell of our immune system and can make a person more vulnerable to life threatening opportunistic infections and diseases so now let's discuss about viral load the amount of hiv in the blood specifically the number of copies of hiv rna is called viral load viral load represent how quickly hiv is replicating when people are first infected the viral load increases rapidly then after about 3 to 6 months even without treatment it drops to the lower level which remains constant called set point This level varies widely from person to person from as little as a few hundred to over a million copies per microliter of blood. Viral load also indicates how contagious the infection is. How fast the CD4 count is likely to decrease. How fast symptoms are likely to appear. The more quickly the CD4 count decreases to the low level that increase the risk of opportunistic infections even in the people without symptoms during successful prep treatment the viral load decreases to very low or undetectable level less than about 20 to 40 copies per microliter of blood however inactive that is latent hiv is still present within the cell so sometimes if we are undergoing treatment that is the viral load is decreasing to a very low level or undetectable level but still there are some latent hiv pro viral dna inside the host cell if treatment is stopped those pro virus will multiply they will replicate they will transcribe to form new viral particles so hiv starts replicating and the viral load again will increase an increase in the viral load during the treatment may indicate the following if someone is undergoing treatment but the viral load is increasing it indicates that the hiv has developed resistance to drug treatment or the person is not taking the prescribed drug or both may be the reason so from this presentation we have learned about the immunology of hiv infection students must go through the symptoms of aids how this disease is transmitted from person to person they also please go through the treatment the medications which are used for treating this aids this syndrome and diagnostic techniques how to di diagnose the presence of hiv in a person so these are the reference books that i have used during the preparation of this presentation students can also go through different different publications which are available in different uh, online sources
Thank you. Thank you all for your kind attention. For further query, you can contact me in this email ID. Thank you.